I first got a real request for this guy now four months ago. I saved it, I sat on it, but I just never got around to it, I guess. Even when a month later, literally to today, which is really, really funny, our same The Rising Sympathy requested the exact same thing. So, why am I getting around to it now? Well, believe it or not, the suggestion has resurfaced. So I'm sorry for taking so long, Sympathy and everyone, but... Here goes nothing, shroom talk time. And there are three types of mushrooms, red, blue, and green. They actually correspond to the day and night cycles of the game, and each will have varied effects on our statuses. But what must we know now is that shoveling up any of them may result in the better sounding two shrooms each. However, we have just fully killed that particular spawn, so that's perhaps a no-go. So, simply pick them instead, as they will regrow, but not by their own lonesome via rain. Five to ten minutes of in-game rain will regenerate our mushes, so keep on it, and one last note, ain't none of them growing in winter, so you best gather when you can. But what can each specific type do for us? Red mushrooms are commonly found in the grasslands and forest biomes of our worlds and are available during the daytime hours, at least when it comes to simply picking them, that is. But whatever you do, never eat an uncooked red cap. Unless you're looking for minus 20 health for whatever reason. Besides, 12.5 hunger and zero sanity to boot is garbage. However, cooked red caps ain't gonna do you any better either, to be honest. Cause they sit at plus one health, zero hunger, and minus 10 sanity. So what the heck is the point of red mushrooms then? Well, they are veggies, so any veggie-specific crockpot dish, or a dish that simply requires a vegetable, can benefit greatly from the use of red caps, so go wild in the kitchen, folks. Or, if you want to have a little fun, you can drop uncooked red caps for other mobs to eat and have them literally eat themselves, deadzo. The choice is yours. Green mushrooms are next and can be located in the forests or our marshes. They also are pickable during dusk and dusk alone, mind you. An uncooked green cap will knock your noggin silly at minus 50 sanity a pop, along with a not so worthy stat regen otherwise. So be careful there. Unless, of course, y'all want to go insane. Cooked green caps, however, will hit you for minus one health each, but 15 sanity a pop for a fantastic sanity snack for nearly every character in the game. They, too, count as veggies, but use red caps alone for recipes, because green and blue caps are better used otherwise. Speaking of... Blue mushrooms are found in grasslands and marshes, but can only be picked come nightfall, so be prepared. Uncooked blue caps are great healing snacks at 20 health a munch plus 12.5 hunger. However, they will drop your sanity by 15 points each time, but nothing a followed up green cap cat fix though. Cooked blue caps restore 10 sanity, but the whopping minus 3 health and 0 hunger, so don't even waste your time. They are healing snacks through and through. Two last notes before we head on down under though. Every type of mushroom can be found within the deciduous forest biome of either solo reign of giants or don't starve together, which makes it the only biome capable of such a thing, at least on the surface that is. And remember that haunting these mushrooms can have a 25% chance of changing into another type if still planted and a 10% chance if not. Use both of these tidbits to your advantage wisely. Now. Let's discuss mush trees. It's very likely your caves will generate with a biome containing all three variants, but I imagine you'll have branches specific to types. So let's just assume that's where you're gonna be. And truly, the most common mush tree around is the blue variant. Chop these down to receive a couple logs and a blue cap. But do note that they are only renewable in Don't Starve Together, not solo play. You can't replant them yourself, of course, but world regrowth will handle it come the mush tree specific seasons. And as for the red and green variants, you can expect the exact same as our blue mush trees, only they'll drop their specific caps, of course. But one quick addition here, 
webbed blue mush trees may be present in these biomes and will spawn cave dwellers upon any interaction, so be very, very careful there. But more on that specific season nonsense. Something really special occurs for our blue mush trees come the winds of winter, to our green trees once the downpours of spring begin, and to our red mush trees once the world's on fire. Mushroom spores. These spores correspond to their specific mush trees and will seemingly float about unless you intervene by catching them with a bug net. But what's their true purpose? Well, we need to cover some other shroom mechanics in order to fully answer that question properly. So let's get to it. Like mushroom planters. Some of my favorite things in all of Don't Starve history. The rot and manure will come very easy, but pray for them tree guardians, or have one of your wormwoods chop his arm off in order to amass the living logs that will be needed, as these are just too good to pass up. Once placed, it takes but a single mushroom within them to begin the growth process, which is incredibly efficient, because come less than four days later, your planters will be fully grown and ready for harvest, granting four total mushrooms each. Each planter can be picked four times before needing quote-unquote refueling. However, the problem lies in that the only things that can refuel them are more living logs, so you'll have to manage the best you can there. But remember those spores, folks? We can actually plant them within these mushroom planters in order to grow their specifically colored mushroom variants and up the harvest to six total mushrooms each instead of four, rendering them even more efficient. Also, there's a 50% chance of a mushroom planter providing another spore once fully grown, so there you go. A major tip though before we move on, growing mushrooms in the caves is an absolute must, as you'll be able to do so all year round, including during winter. So I suggest setting up a shroom shop near a mushroom biome that will be helping you out the most. Enjoy! But before we go any further, we must highlight the biggest shroom of them all. Toadstool. Now, we ain't getting all into him today, so watch one of our other Toadstool videos for all that nonsense. But we must know that he'll drop numerous mushrooms of all sorts upon his death, and a couple mushroom related blueprints that can expand our shroom empire just a little more. So, Let's talk them. The first being the Fun Cap Blueprints. Also obtainable via claws, mind you, but that's besides the point. Depending on which variant you receive, it will cost you six specific mushrooms to craft a head item that reduces the rate of hunger loss by 25%, grants 60 points of overheating protection, has 20% wetness resistance, will occasionally spawn mushroom spores, and it takes six days to spoil. Truly not too shabby. However, the downside is, then any items or foods that can spoil in your inventory will do so 50% faster when wearing one of these suckers, so be careful there. Put the perishables in your backpack to prevent such a thing. And finally, mush lights and glow caps. Both blueprints have a chance of dropping, so pray for both at once to avoid having a murder toad over and over again for purely aesthetic items. Mush lights are a structure that needs light bulbs or glow berries to function and will work as a lamp pretty much, providing long lasting light. The more fuel you give it, the bigger said light radius actually is. Now glow caps on the other hand can have six different colored lighting effects depending on what you place within them. Purple light is achieved via one red spore and three blue ones. Orange light from three red and one green. Simple white light via one spore of each type or just light bulbs obviously. Yellowish light can come from two reds and two greens. Pinkish light via three reds and one light bulb. And a lovely bluish green from two blue spores and two green ones. Absolutely beautiful. Of course, a single color spore plus three light bulbs will result in stronger basic colors. But there you have it everyone. Just about all things mushrooms. I bet there's more here than you would have thought, huh? They are incredibly valuable resources, so use them wisely. Thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!